Shut it, man! All right, it's the Hawk. For those of you who don't know, the TNA X Division was one of the things that set the product apart from the competition, at least in the early days. A typical match in the early days would see an established TNA wrestler such as Jerry Lynn, Chris Sabin, AJ Styles, or the Amazing Red or Kaz taking on the best high-flying wrestlers on the indie scene at the time. And these things were crazy. You'd never know who would turn up. The action was unlike anything you'd see on telly because TNA just let their wrestlers go out and put on an insane match and they actually gave it 20 minutes a show and the wrestlers actually had characters. Now a lot of arguments have been said over what the X Division style actually was because later in its run it got the branding of it's not about weight limits, it's about no limits. But regardless of what anyone said, this was just a cruiserweight division. Later you'd get guys like Samoa Joe in there, but don't let that narrative fool you. The majority of its existence, it was a cruiserweight division, and a very good one at that. It was must-watch telly. As the years went on, it seemed to lose its way. It often didn't feature for weeks at a time, and when it did feature, it was just a five-minute opener with no storyline. Fans clamoured for the return of the real X division. Then Hogan and Bischoff arrived in TNA, and as with most things, it wasn't looking good at this point. But just to be clear, the division had already been de-pushed by the time they turned up. They did not kill the X Division, they just helped. In 2013, there were a lot of TNA wrestlers back in the company from the old days, and they had nothing to do. Bischoff has said in shoot interviews that he thought the X Division was dumb and he didn't understand it. That's so stupid, just because it couldn't be easily defined, he didn't think it was important. Just because something is difficult to explain, it doesn't make it less important. Take attractiveness, for example, and then ask your girl about the Hawk. We're getting off subject here because the point in this video is for me to show you the single dumbest thing that Bischoff and Hogan did to the X Division and how it was the final nail in the coffin. Today's video was also a Patreon request by Brent Degenhart. If you want to make the Hawk talk, sign up today. Okay, let's get into it. What happened when Bischoff changed the rules of the X Division? The champion of the division was Kenny King at the time, a man who seemed to get a lot of hate nowadays, but this was the biggest push of his career, so we have to see if the hate is justified. For the record, I've always thought they had star charisma. Perhaps the biggest shock of this video is that he won the belt from No Job Rob, and he did it with any help or cheating. Probably the biggest J.O.B. Rob did in his career. I guess the belt wasn't that important to RVD though, because he didn't even ask for a rematch. Come on Rob, wouldn't do the job to Kenny King two matches in a row, don't be stupid. His first title defence was a triple threat in lockdown 2013. And let me tell you, this thing sucked Sonny Siaki's ass, it was appalling. I'm not sure what went wrong here, but it was a slow motion botch fest. Kenny King almost broke his neck in the first two minutes when he tries to do a moonsault off Zima Arn's back to the outside. He also tries some sort of flip kick which didn't connect and it all just looks a bit amateur at this point. Kenny King retains the belt, so not a good start to this video. You'd think they'd get the belt off Kenny King now and perhaps not want to do triple threats for a while. Well, you'd be wrong. No, instead they ran a video package of all the incredible stuff that had happened in the X Division in the past, reminding you why it sucks now. And it covered some new rule changes that would be happening in the division. They call it the X Division Evolution. From now on, all X Division matches will be triple threat. There will now be a £230 weight limit to the division. And if you're the man in the match who isn't pinned, you'll be guaranteed a place in the next triple threat. If you're the one who gets pinned, you're hit of a brick. Now these don't sound like rules which are going to save the division. If anything, less rules is what helps the division. Bischoff was trying to define the division as a cruiserweight division. I think they thought having three guys in the ring at all times would open it up to some creative double team moves and we'd get some good matches. Well, I guess they didn't watch lockdown. Instead, all we seem to get is botches. And don't get me started on the £230 weight limit. In 2013, that meant the majority of any roster could have competed in this division. So it might as well have just had a giant sign attached to it saying, this is the TNAX division. Sorry, no fat guys. But they wouldn't all be title matches. They would also have number one contenders matches. Ooh, edgy. And that is literally the only time the X Division got TV time. So as you can imagine, the matches became very predictable and samey. You mostly only got to see the same few guys. The champion isn't on TV for several weeks in a row. There are no storylines. It took a division that was about no limits and gave it several limits. Another new addition was added to TNA at this time. It wasn't just for the X Division, but I think they first did it in an X Division match. So the referees now wore caps that had cameras fitted to them. This made them look like the biggest geeks you'd want to smack. The cameras meant we could get up and close and personal with the grainy poor quality footage that was streaming from the cameras. In reality, all this did was make the matches even less watchable because of the jarring cuts to the ugly footage. I will say props for trying something different though. Briss Saban returned to TNA after a year out injured. I wonder what the X Division veteran thought of all these wacky rules. They also briefly let fans vote on who would be the number one contender for the X Division matches. Yay, more rules and limits. Anyway, Saban wins his return match, so he's in line for a title shot. And thus, the only storyline of this triple threat era started. It was a story of redemption for young Chris Saban. He was coming back from two serious injuries and he was past it. 
He had nothing to do, and Kenny King called him Frail Saban. Surprisingly, Saban was unable to win the title after Kenny King pinned Petey Williams. This, of course, meant that he stays in contention as he wasn't the one who was pinned. The matches were all fine, I guess, but it's nothing more, nothing less. Not at all like the early days of the X Division. It feels like they're being controlled too much in the ring. They aren't doing anything too risky or extreme. And they seem to want to do a redemption story with Saban. Don't you think it would have worked better if he had a singles feud with King over the belt? Instead, they have to muddy the waters by adding another man into the match. And that man would be the mass wrestler Suicide, a wrestler based off a made-up video game character. At Slammiversary, they'd have a triple threat X Division match with Ultimate X rules. Whilst it was an average match, this certainly wasn't bringing the X Division back. The match is won by Chris Sabin. It got weird after the match as Hulk Hogan gave Sabin his full endorsement. He said things like, The crowd are going to scream as loud for you as when I slammed Andre, and Chris Sabin is the future of professional wrestling. Hulk also reminded us that TNA does this thing where the title could be traded in for a shot at the world title down the line. Now this did make the X Division title important because it meant they could trade it in for something that was actually good. We got a rematch and a straight up triple threat. It was a few weeks after the original match because nobody seemed to care and they probably forgot it happened. The match was slow and not up to the standard we wanted for the X Division. But there's yet another twist in this story. Suicide beats Kenny King and now he's the X Division champion. But surprisingly, after the match, the Hawkster brings out a small elf-looking man called TJ Perkins. And Hogan tells us that he's the real Suicide, but someone jumped him and stole his outfit during this match. The masked man dumps in his nappy and runs away from the Hawkster. He doesn't want to reveal his true identity. The masked man is cornered again later in the night by both Hogan and the world champion Bully Ray. Suicide then unmasked to reveal that it's Austin Aries. As a punishment for Aries jumping Suicide, the Hawkster demands that Aries, Suicide, Saban have a match for the X Division title. He keeps calling Chris Saban, Saban Mania. And the other man looks like Hogan's helper stood next to him. For some reason, Hogan has also changed Suicide's name to Manic. I all these random changes. At least it made the X Division important for about a week. They actually main evented an episode of Impact. And this triple threat is literally the only one that feels like any sort of deal. The Aces and Eights interfere though and powerbomb Manic on the floor and he's taken away on a stretcher. So now it's the first one-on-one -on -one we've had in the X Division in about four months. And it's suddenly intense. It has hard-hitting moves. The ring is surrounded by main eventers. The crowd are finally into an X Division match. There's lots of close pinning attempts. It almost feels like two men trying to settle a score and leaving it all in the ring due to the massive implications behind the match. The only good X Division match in five months ends with Chris Saban doing his frail Saban finisher off the top rope for the three. And just like that, Ares is out of the world heavyweight picture and Saban is back in again. Chris Saban is suddenly the most important man in TNA and he's embedded into the main event storylines, the Aces and Eights versus TNA. But he has to vacate the X Division belt in order to do that. Saban ends up beating Bully Ray to capture his first and only world heavyweight title in a pretty cool and random moment. Back to the triple threat division. A tournament was set up to crown a new champion with even more triple threat X division matches happening. God, didn't they learn anything from that period where Saban and Austin Aries had a one-on-one -on -one for a while? As predicted, all three matches were bland, rushed, and just not really that impressive. All three tournament matches were exactly the same. There was no hatred, no storylines, no fan reaction. Remember when all these guys in the X division had a different style? There were wins in this tournament for Sonjay Dutt, Manic, and Greg Marachulo. More like Greg Marahulo. And now they must fight in a triple threat Ultimate X match. It doesn't exactly help that no one is behind any of these guys. A guy in a mask who is based off a video game. A guy who has great moves, but let's be honest, he never really got any sort of reaction from the fans. And a guy who I literally don't even remember being in TNA. That's how relevant he was. And yes, I know he's the former Trent Beretta. Shut up or I'll smack you one. This match is scary because Sanjay Dutt and Marachulo battle on top of the X Division structure. It looks like it may collapse at any moment. Scary stuff. Manic wins the X Division title. And with Manic as the champion, that is where our story ends, my little friends. TNA announces that due to fan feedback, all the X Division matches will now be singles matches, thus limiting themselves even more. I wouldn't worry about it though. Just two months later, they went back to having no limits. So that was a waste of time too. The X Division went back to barely existing. In fact, some months it didn't even make it onto telly at all. Not a single X Division match happened in an entire two months towards the end of 2013. Let that set in. The division died right here. The only time it ever held any relevance in the future was when it became that time once a year when a wrestler could trade in the belt for a shot at the world title. I'm not saying the triple threat rules killed the X Division. 
but it was the final nail in the coffin. It had been dying a long, slow, drawn-out death for many years. It just became obvious at this point that Bischoff and Hogan didn't understand what the X Division was and why it was so good in the first place. It reeks of desperation, and that's what killed the division for me. It felt like TNA briefly were listening to the fans, and then they threw it down in anchor when it didn't work. But this is what happens when you don't give wrestlers time to do promos, get a storyline over, or have a compelling match. It just turns into a bunch of random guys flipping out the ring and nobody cares. This might not seem that bad, but it made the X Division predictable, and that was something that was the opposite of how it should have been. It was one of millions of ideas that TNA just gave up on. Speaking of which, what the hell happened to those hats the referees were wearing? And if you don't agree with that, screw the censors, I'll be swearing. 